I was really disappointed with my classmates this last week because I had to make um, a survey of who people thought Plato was, like the philosopher. And more than half of them said, oh, he's that one dude who made the doughy stuff that you play with as a kid. And I'm just all like, really? He's not just some toy you played with as a kid. He is a person. He is an amazing philosopher and politician and mathematician. And so today I'm going to tell you who he really is. He's not that doughy stuff that you played with as a kid. Just if you're wondering. Before we get started with this, please don't judge me for any like mispronunciations that I make. Cause I <laughs> so Plato is actually the youngest son of Ariston and Peritione of Athens, who were two very wealthy people at the time. He was still young when his dad died, and his mom remarried to a guy named Pyrolampes. Plato did a lot of growing up in Pyrolampes' home, so he was basically his new dad. When he was still a young man, Plato was taught by Cratylus, who was famous for his studies in cosmology. At this time, historians are almost certain that he met Socrates because his uncle was close was a close friend to Socrates. This uh, philosopher, Socrates, eventually became Plato's teacher. Plato also served in the Peloponnesian War for five years. Athens versus Sparta. And that's my interpretation of the Peloponnesian War. Please don't kill me, history teacher, it was an accident. Okay, maybe not, but that's okay. Even after fighting for this long, he didn't feel happy being a soldier because he wanted to be a politician. It's just what he liked to do, that's what he studied. After five years, <laughs> I spelled years on my paper, E-Y-A-R-S. After five years of service, he joined a form of government ruled by multiple families and people called an oligarchy. This oligarchy was called the 30 Tyrants. The name says it all. They really abused the people they ruled in search of loot, possessions, and money. Here are some examples. The 30 Tyrants had a henchman, and he was recorded to have kidnapped somebody um, in order to gain his family's wealth. Not a very nice thing to do, if you ask me. People who worked for the 30 tyrants would even rip earrings off of people's ears in order to gain loot. Ugh. Now that I think of it, that's not a really fun thing to talk about, so... <laughs> I think that Plato agrees with me, too, because he left the oligarchy mostly because one of the members was becoming really violent and didn't really like him anymore. A few years later, the 30 tyrants was taken off of Athens' um, government and democracy was returned to Athens and Plato was able to do what he liked most, which was politics. They considered philosophers and politicians like him a bad influence on the younger generation of Athens. Certain events made him seriously reconsider being a politician. He's like, Wait, what? The main reason was uh, his friend Socrates dying, and that was really sad because if you know the story of Socrates, basically he was given the choice to either leave Athens or drink hemlock. And if you don't know what hemlock is, it looks like a pine cone, it's really poisonous, and he decided to drink it instead of leave. Talk about really liking your hometown, am I right? Anyway, Plato took a little break from politics and he took an awesome vacation sort of thing to Egypt and Italy. In Egypt, he learned about water clocks, like clocks made of or that use water. And later he introduced those clocks to Greece. In Italy, he learned about the works of Pythagoras and figured out that he actually really took a liking to math. Eventually, Plato went to work in the military again, and may many people think that it was at this point that he decided to start writing dialogues. If you don't know what a dialogue is, look it up! 
<laughs> just kidding. The dialogue is just um, um, it's a conversation recorded down on paper, like deep discussions. And so Plato actually made a lot of these because he had a lot of discussions, and it was really extensive. He has so many volumes of dialogues. In about 386 BC, uh, Plato founded his academy in Athens, which lasted even after he died. In this academy, he taught philosophy, math, science, and politics. But unfortunately, way after he died, it was shut down in 529 AD. This academy lasted for a really long time. Now, if you don't know, BC works backwards, so the smaller the number, the closer it is to right now. So, if you add 386 BC plus 529.80, you'll get the amount of years that his academy was around. And if you do the math, that is 915 years. That's a really long time. To put it into perspective, I made this little example. Do you know Trinity College? It's a really old college. It was founded in 1592. That was, that was a long time ago. This was around the time of the Renaissance. Like, Shakespeare, Michelangelo, the original Martin Luther, and King Henry VIII. Those are really like old figures. We don't, we connect them with the past a while back. Trinity College is 422 years old. Now when you compare this to Plato's Academy, 915 years old. 422. 915. 422. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Plato's Academy lasted for a long, 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 long time. The most important contributions that Plato made to knowledge was politics. Most of his dialogues were on politics and the effects of politics on people and on the government. His most famous dialogue for politics was The Republic, where he discussed what makes the ideal government and told us that the ideal government should be based around justice. Many of his mathematical contributions were found in the dialogue Timaeus. This is where the knowledge of Platonic figures comes from. Platonic figures include the cube, tetrahedron, icosahedron, the octahedron, and the dodecahedron. Timaeus actually includes a lot of Plato's more abstract thoughts in it. And when he was describing the um, polyhedrons that he made, he actually related them to elements. Like the tetrahedron was fire and the dodecahedron was like the universe. And I mean, I couldn't understand that. Maybe some historians can, but I just, I don't know. But he made up these figures and that's what we know about them. He described them and connected them to elements. Plato eventually died in 347 BC when he was attending a wedding party. What? What a wedding gift, a dead guy. You probably haven't been paying attention to like anything in this video, but maybe if you're watching this part, maybe you actually made it to the end and didn't skip over something. But if I have taught you anything, I hope that I taught you that Play-Doh is so much more than just Play-Doh, like the stuff that you played with as a kid. I, I hope that I got that point across.